as promised, one of the top pass rushers in the National Football League, certainly over the last decade and a half since he came off the campus at Syracuse, is sitting right here on the Rich Eisen Show set. Good to see you, Dwight Freeney. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How you been? I'm doing just fine. I am doing just fine. What is your deal? What is your deal? Well, you know what? I'm still having fun. Still having fun playing this game. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, hopefully, it'll be 15 for me. Yeah. You know, when it really flies, you know, but like I said, I'm having fun doing it. You know, I'm just training right now as a free agent. It's kind of tough being a free agent, mm -hmm. you know, in, in year 14 going into 15 because, you, you know, you like to be stationed and based at a place. But, you know, I've been handling it pretty well the last couple of years, and uh, hopefully, you know, I get signed with him. Well, I mean, you chose Arizona uh, in the middle of the – well, I guess after four weeks last yeah. year, in the middle of the first half of the season, yeah. worked out very well for Absolutely. you. What about Arizona right now? Are they a, an I, option? I would love to. Um, but, you know, it's up to them, you know, and, and I understand, you know, I'm 35, 36, 36 years old going into year 15. So I understand they're thinking about the future. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's five years down the road or four, what have you. But I, I think they have some young guys that they want to see what's happening. Sure. With. I, I, I understand, you know, and, and I understand both sides of it. You know, I just want to be a place where I'm wanted and that guys really want to play me the way that I need to be played. Well, so. can I be your agent for a quick second? Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Uh, where were the young guys uh, on a certain Thursday night in the <laughs> desert when Teddy Bridgewater had the game in his hands? Yeah. Where were those guys? What? And where were you? Yeah. Where were you? You were, the, you were the one with the sack force fumble, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. so... I'll, I'll to, let me toot the horn for you right there. How about... What about the idea that this might actually be helpful for you because at year 15, you don't want to be doing a training camp, do you? Well, really? you know what? Honestly, as, as crazy as this is going to be sound, yes. training camp isn't the worst in the world. If you're going to a team that doesn't know you and you need to know the schemes. Okay. And, you know, they need to know me to know how they want to fit me in. It was kind of tough last year. Yeah, I skipped training camp, but I'm also getting placed on a team in the middle of the year when their wheels are already going, they're already going full head of steam, and now they have to understand how to use me the right way and get comfortable with the system. I have to get comfortable with what they, how they want things done. Yes. It's not the easiest thing to do. But I, and I got it done. But isn't it as simple as just putting your hands in the dirt and going hunting? Well, yeah, you, you, would, you would think that, but sometimes you get put in a situation where, mm -hmm. you know, when I was in Indianapolis, I mean, that playbook was about – Two pages, okay? Mm -hmm. I, when I got to Arizona, it was like a dictionary. No kidding. I mean, yes, they are very, very complex defense, defensive scheme. And, you know, there was some, you know, familiar familiarity as far as a concept standpoint from where I was at the year before, which is in San Diego. So I had a little bit of familiarity as far as dropping back in coverage and doing some 3-4 stuff. But... Trust me, when you have a playbook that thick is deep and getting dropped in, those guys have, yes. have been there, have been doing it for years, it, it's it's not easy. So if there's a prospective employer out there that thinks, ah, he doesn't want to go to training camp, we'll, we'll, we'll get him in September. That's not the case. That is yeah, not the I, issue I, here. Listen, I, look, I have done it for a long time, mm -hmm. and, I, and I can go to training camp and have fun. Now, that being said, I mean, there is a balance there, you know, where – Okay, go to training camp, but does that mean you need to be doing two a days every single day, what have you, banging your body up just like you were 21, 22? I can do it. Is that the smartest thing to do? Probably not, but whatever they call for, I'll do it. How's the game changed since you came out of Syracuse and the way it is right now, Dwight? It, it's, it's changed quite a bit. Um, when I came out, it was more pro-style offense. Um, you're talking, you know, Passing situations, passing formations, you know, shotgun, you know, they're going to pass the ball. Um, now you have so much, you, call it, you know, option game and, and quarterbacks who are running the ball and throwing the ball and a lot more movement and, and as far as packages. and for, it's, it's a lot different. It wasn't back in the day. It was like, okay, I know first down, they're going to run the ball. Second down, oh, shotgun, here comes the pass. A lot easier um, to get a handle on things. So, um, it's 70% pass now, you know, it's a spread offense, you know, and, you know, I think that helps a guy like me Yes. because obviously I like to get after the quarterback just a little bit more than playing the run, even though I do like to play the run and I can still do that. Uh, but I, I think it works in my favor in a sense. Who's the best defensive teammate 
you've been around where you said that's the most talented guy I've ever played with? Oof, that's that's a good one. Um, you know, I think it differs from position to position. I think the defensive lineman, Robert Mathis. You know, the, you know he he is a Hall of Famer in my mind. Mm. Um, great motor, great player, great friend. You don't hear his name mentioned in, in the Hall of Fame conversation. Yeah, usually. I know, and I and I think you know that's that's not right based on what he's done in this league. You know, um, and and it's not easy. You know, it was just me and him, man. You know, and and we kind of set the trend as far as having two defensive ends on both sides getting after the QB. I don't know how many sacks there are from a combo uh, in the league's history, but I know me and Robert are up there. So what about walk me two levels back, you guys that you've played with, second level and okay. third level? Uh, you know, we got yeah Bobby Sanders, obviously Bob Sanders' uh, safety position, unbelievable talent. Um, Man, he gave up his body. It's I mean, that simple. Oh, no, absolutely. He, he, he played the game one way, you know, and he's going to run right through you. Yeah. No matter what's in front of you. Um, one of the best safeties I've seen. Because that was the conversation when your ankle was all, for the lack of better yeah. phrase, jacked up yeah. going in that Super Bowl. Yeah. That the run game was, your run defense was substandard and no mm -hmm. one was going to be, able, you weren't going to be able to make the Super Bowl that year, let yeah. alone win it. No, exactly. And then... Sanders gets dropped in the box, and mm -hmm. all sorts of oh, things change. Absolutely, he's like a, a linebacker playing, you yeah. know, safety position, um, and and he and he could he had a lot of great instincts and played the game the right way. So you know, Bobby definitely, Patrick Peterson, corner, hands he's down, the real, deal. real deal. Patrick, real deal. What about Honey Badger? What about Tom? I love I, I love him too, man. He is a passionate guy that has all types of potential and talent. Unfortunately, I hadn't played with him long enough sure. to really see it, you know, because he got hurt towards the end. Um, but, you know, he's going to be somebody that, you know, God willing that when he got injured, that he comes back to full health. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with at, in, in that uh, secondary. Dwight spot. Freeney here on the Rich Eisen Show, 14 seasons in the National Football League, joining me here uh, in person. Because uh, I, I, the reason why I said defense, I'm assuming offense is 18. That's, oh, yeah. that, that's yeah, well, 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 it depends. I mean, you got okay. 18 as, but then, you know, Marvin Harrison, you know, some of the things that Marvin has done from the re receiver position. Tell me who he is. There's going to be a, by the way, that's coming in the yeah. next two to three weeks with Marvin Harrison going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Yeah. Who Marvin Harrison is as a person is yes. going to be front and center for a lot of conversation. Yeah. So you might as well front load it with you. Dwight. Well, I mean, Marvin, I, mean, I look at Marvin, you know, kind of like big bro to me. I mean, Marvin is one of those guys, he doesn't, he's not trying to be the life of the party. He just comes in, does his work, does it the way he needs to do it, and just relaxes and enjoys what he enjoys, you know, and, and what, whether that be, you know, just hanging out, boxing, going to boxing events, you know, he's not necessarily the, the most limelight type of guy. Yeah. No. But, you know, you just have to respect, respect him because he just, you know, he, he, he was a true professional. He came in, he did what he had to do, and then his other stuff never got into anything that I know of that was anything, you know, a big deal and, and just stayed focused and just was mentored to so many guys in the league but just did it quietly and did it his way. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, so. You throw him in the mix with Peyton and that. Who else? Him and I mean, I'm, I'm obviously I'm slightly, uh, you know, biased. Edrin mm -hmm. James, what he's done in his career. You know, I know he was up for. You know, I, I don't know where he was at as far as I mean, potential. Yeah. Uh, I, but he was in the conversation there too, um, as far as a running back who can do it all. Um, he's up there, man. As far as block. Pat, catching passes in the backfield and rushing yard and be able to run the ball. I mean, he's a triple threat. Um, and I don't know how many triple threats that there are now. I mean, he's a guy who never had to leave the field. Right. And then there's 87, who I'm very partial to. Oh, man. I love Reggie Wayne. And, and exactly. And I hope, I think, I think he's first ballot. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I do too. The things that Reggie has done. You know, and I think a little bit has been under the radar, if you can even say that, with Reggie, is because Marvin was there and he had Peyton. And then you kind of think, well, you know, those are the big, the big dogs. But then you got Reggie, who no one could cover, um, puts up all types of stats. Mm -hmm. and, and the guy that he is off the field is an amazing 
Uh, you, you know Reggie, he's, he's, a, he's a life of, of the locker room, likes to joke around and... Uh, yeah, shows up in helicopters, I training mean, camp, listen, he does man, all that business. It's classic, man, it's classic. Now, uh, uh, there's no delicate way to ask it, so I'll just ask it. How, how did you guys not win more Super Bowls? You know, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, those things just happen. You know, I know there's a lot of players out there who hadn't even made the playoffs. Great players, maybe great teams that just hadn't won as many Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so hard to get done. It is a real hard deal. And people just assume that, oh, you know, you got to win a Super Bowl. There's a, just think about how many teams actually won the Super Bowl in the existence of the NFL. It hadn't been as many teams as people may think. There's been a lot of repeat teams, you know, but it's not just been, you know, I, I am less than half of the league you know, team-wise, have won, you know, and it's not easy. Now, obviously, yeah, would I have loved to have two more, three more rings when this is all said and done? Absolutely. But there's a lot of other teams who want, who want the same thing, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, we're playing in a business where you fail majority of the time and you're still the most – I mean, think about, let's see, the Patriots, right, would be in our era, my era, um, had the most rings. What is it, three um, – Rings that Brady has four? He's got four, yes. Four rings? Okay, mm -hmm. how many years did he play? Yeah, since Fifth, 2000 was when he was drafted. Six, year what, before you. 16 years. He's only won four times. That means he was miserable 12 years in a row, 12 years out of that 16. Right. And happy only four. So even someone who's at the top of as far as getting the rings are concerned, you're still – Failing majority, so it's not an easy thing to do at all. Dwight Freeney here on the Rich Eisen Show. A couple minutes left. You graduated Syracuse the same year as uh, Chris Brockman. Do you remember him on the campus at Syracuse at all, Dwight? Um, anything? Well, any not any memories? Really? Okay. But you know, that Dwight used, used to come play pickup basketball with us at Flanagan Gym all the time. You dunked on my friend at a pickup game. It was epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I did actually dunk. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you remember posterizing Chris Brockman's? Friend? Not me. Yeah, not me. My I do, friend. I do remember a couple moments when I was okay. out. You know, you know, a little young and being able to jump and, <laughs> and doing some things on the basketball court. Okay. Yeah. But but in, in just in particular, the exploits of this man on the campus at Syracuse does not doesn't ring a bell. Doesn't doesn't okay. ring a bell right now. I, I mean, I played a lot of years in NFL, so it might have a little oh, bit to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Way to do that. <laughs> that. Thank you, thank you. I like that. Very very good. Hey, look, man. Um, thank you for coming in here. Yeah. I pre look, you were in your second year in the league when the NFL Network started. Yeah. So I've been covering you forever in a day. It's great to see you. It's nice. great to see that Yankee hat represented Absolutely. on your lid when you're, when you're out there talking sometimes. And when you hook up with a team, call. Absolutely. Okay? I'd love I'm to in. have you on. Thank you for having me. You got it. Maybe, and may, maybe right here in Los Angeles. You never know. You never know. You just knock on the door or maybe they knock I on the door. I remember that. So you something. remember that. So basically you're thinking sometime <laughs> in the next week, uh, next month to month and a half. Yeah, hopefully I, get, I hear pop. something. Yeah, something's going to pop. Okay. Either way. Good. Good to see you. All right, my Thanks, man. Thanks, Dwight Freeney. Same to you. Uh, at Dwight Freeney, at Dwight Freeney on Twitter, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Back with more in a moment. Welcome back to the uh, Rich Eisen Show. Dwight Freeney has been kind enough to stick around for one more segment to tell us the story of that one time he heard Tony Dungy curse a blue streak. So the floor is yours. <laughs> yeah, we're still waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, we, no, the one time he did a whole Richard Pryor act in the... In yeah, the, yeah. Well, listen, we are still waiting for that. Don't hold your breath. That story can come Never happened, huh? Never, ever. Not even close? Not, Not even, even one toast where he, uh, he came... I mean, there was one time there was a fight on the field and he raised his, you know, his voice just a little bit louder than he would normally. Uh -oh. Everybody was like, wait a minute. Uh oh Dungeon's yelling in practice. I guess there was a fight, and then he, I guess he kicked the guy off the, the practice field. And he I was kicked like, somebody off? Yeah. Do, do we remember the guy's name? Yeah, I... We, do we, we, know cannot, we cannot mention his name. Because his name was Peyton Manning. Wow. <laughs> You're really stirring not, it up now. I did not say that. That was you. No. <laughs> when, was last time, when was the last time you wore your Super Bowl ring? Oh. For us, right? A while ago, yeah. Last, so when you came in Sunday game day morning, probably a couple the last years ago. time I did that was then. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really wear it often. You know, it's one of those things that is just set up in a little case, and and I like to, you know, look on it like when I'm retired or what have you. But I, right now, I'm still in the business of trying to get more. You know, so you know, yeah. when I retire, I worry about those rings later. Yeah, I know, and because uh, again, the time when you got those rings and Tony Dungy is like that is effing. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's the word to use. Right, exactly. <laughs> F. Yeah, right. It, it, it's, he, he is truly 
one of the all-time greats. Absolutely. And deserving of the honor. Yeah, it's and, interesting. He and, he and Marvin going and, in together. And, and, and it's in a great thing. And the thing about Tony is, honestly, it's not just that he was a great coach. He was mm -hmm. a great person. You know, he's a father figure to many guys yeah. on that team. So, you know, you, it's one thing you feel bad when you mess up because the coach... But, you know, it's now you feel bad just in general, just anything that you do, yeah. and that, that Tony Tony told you to do this, now you feel like you let him down. You, but I it, love the story you told, because, you know, I always could tell when I was in trouble just by the tone of my parents' voice. Yes. So when he raised his oh, voice gosh. on the practice... Oh, any yeah. decibel, any decibel, one decibel. It was, it was oh, wait a minute, something, something ain't right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Coach, I'm sorry. Dwight yeah. Freeney here on The Rich Eisen Show. Thanks for coming. All right, on. no problem. Appreciate it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.